We are in for a wild ride as we kick off the second and final day of the Strongman competition here at the 2022 Rogue Invitational. Thank you so much for being with us today from the Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. Three events remain for the Strongman and then we will crown a champion at the end of Saturday. I'm Sean Woodland, joined by Lauren Chalet and the four-time World's Strongest Man, Brian Shaw. And Brian, how badly do you want to be down there giving this thing a try? I mean, just looking at this piece of equipment, Bill, Katie, the entire Rogue team killed it, and I would love to be down there for sure. A lot of just six points separate first from third right now in the overall standings. A lot still needs to be decided here. Loads to be decided. Big, big points up for play. This is going to be an important event. Alexei Novikov comes in as your overall leader. He has a 1.5 point lead over Trey Mitchell. Martins Leedsies is within six points in third place. He has a lot of work to do today if he wants to erase that deficit. Event number four is the Roga Coaster Pull presented by Rogue. 54 feet up that incline. Laws, what are the keys of this event? So this is a very interesting event. We see arm over arms quite regularly in Strongman, but Rogue have gone extreme with this setup. The athletes need to have long levers, strong legs, strong back, and a strong grip is important in this one as well. Let's send it down to Kiki Dixon with more on the Roga Coaster. Guys, the Roga Coaster is an impressive new implement for our Strongman. It's made out of 16,000 pounds of steel, 1,000 pounds of wood that comes right from Texas, and then this track they've got to get those sandbags up, it's 54 feet. The goal was to mimic an old-fashioned old roller coaster, and hats off to Rogue because mission accomplished. That is an impressive implement, and just it's the little details too that it will make the clicking sound that you hear from a traditional roller coaster as that cart works its way up the track. Rogue really have gone all out with this equipment. As I've said before, we've seen many different types of arm over arms in competition. We've seen trucks pulled, we've seen boats pulled up hills, sleds, but this contraption is incredible. It, <laughs> I'm sat here retired and I'm excited to try and go out there and give it a try. I know, Brian, you are all over this type of event. Would you love to be trying this one? Oh, I, I would love to be trying this. And like you said, the build is incredible. It's extravagant, it's eye-catching, and I, I think it's everything probably they wanted it to be. Now, these competitors coming out here today, what I will say is this is a, 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 uh, an interesting way to start the morning, right? So making sure that you're prepared, you're mentally prepared, you're warmed up, your body's ready to go. All of these factors are very, very big with this. And uh, hopefully these guys are psyched up and ready. I mean, look, just looking up at that track is going to be something else. We've got our first athlete out there, Kevin Ferris. He's an athlete with an extremely good grip. How do we think he can do on this one? I think Kevin can set a really, really good benchmark here. Uh, like you said, phenomenal grip, uh, his technique looks good off the start. It looks like that rope, there's a lot of play in it. So keeping tension on the rope is gonna be a big, big factor here for these guys. So they're not trying to re-grip, they're not trying to you know, swim, in essence, to catch the rope and, and uh, get their hands in place. So the tension is important. One thing I'm noticing there, that Kevin is already wrapping that rope around his hand. Now, Kevin probably has one of the best grips out of all these athletes, but he's one of the lighter athletes as well. If he's struggling with grip, I think some of the guys are really going to struggle. Well, the fatigue factor of the grip is a big thing as well. So, you know, as you're going through this, maybe the first couple pulls are very, very strong, very solid. And then as you get into it, if, you, if your hands start to slip just a little bit, your back can be as strong as you want it to be. But the problem is your connection point is slipping and then you've got a problem. This event will end not when the cart gets to the top, but when the bag gets dumped out, goes down that slide, and hits that red mat. That's when time will end. And there's a 90-second time cap here, and, and Ferris is getting closer to the top here. Ten seconds to go to try and finish this off. It looks like he's come to a standstill now. And like you say, it's all about the connection. He could still have the power in the back and legs, but if that is going through the hands and he can't hold on, he can't apply that power to every drive. Yeah, I think for the guys, and again, we haven't been out there on the floor to see the conditions, but if there's any type of moisture whatsoever on that rope, things can change a lot with this, right? So if the rope is really dry, that is a completely different event compared to if the rope has a little bit of moisture. So you may be seeing that. I mean, I think Kevin looks very frustrated, and what I would say is 
the guys are going to know that Kevin has a pretty good grip, right? So coming into this, that's probably going to concern a lot of them that he didn't finish because they would probably be expecting Kevin to finish just like I would be. I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised that he didn't get that done. So this is a tough pull, and uh, the guys are going to have to work. They're really going to have to work to put the points up on the board. And a lot of these guys looking at the overall scores, strategically, they need to step up. And, and uh, you know, I think Max is, is the next guy that really has his back against the wall, and he's got to make a move right now if he's going to do anything in the overall points. So Max didn't have a good day yesterday, but this is an event that he does like. Saw him do a very similar event to this at your competition, the Shaw Classic. I believe he won that event. He did. He did win that event, yeah. So we'll get a real good idea of how difficult this event is watching this man now. Well, his Max's arm strength is phenomenal. His grip strength is phenomenal. Again, a taller guy, so his levers are very, very good. So if he can maximize that, and if he can stay connected to the rope and use good technique, keep tension on the rope, I think that Max could be a, a potential winner of this event, you know, and, and uh, could put a lot of pressure on the guys that are going to follow him here. Let's go back and take a look at Kevin Ferris's attempt. He started off really well here and was making some good, solid progress until just got stuck. His first pulls were powerful. He's getting good distance on each pull. The car is going up quite a good distance. He just started fatiguing in, in those hands. It, and like I said, Kevin's one of the strongest in terms of grip strength. But it's that lactic acid that builds up in the forearms. It's a little bit different to just holding on to, to a bar, perhaps. An arm over arm typically takes a, a different kind of grip strength compared to, say, a forearm or a carry, something like that. So as you're re-gripping, and like you said, Lawrence, I don't think many people understand how much your arms get pumped with an event like this. Because, I mean, you think of how many times you're touching that rope, how many times you're gripping it, squeezing, trying to pull. So, you know, getting good length out of each pull is important. But one thing I will say with Kevin is, you see him re-gripping a lot there in the rope. Um, that The indicator is the tension from where they are seated to where the actual uh, track starts. And if that tension is good, that's, that's where you know you've done a good job. But if you're having to take multiple grips to grab the rope, it's also going to fatigue your grip a little bit. He was quite loose with the rope quite often in those pulls. We can definitely see a, more, a, small, a smoother transaction between each pull. Yeah, I mean, you can just see at the end here, he's just, just slipping on the rope. I mean, it's, it's again, it's not that he doesn't have any power left uh, to pull it. It's just when your hands can't maintain that grip, you can't move the cart. It's as simple as that. So Maxime Boudreaux up next. And Maxime is an athlete we expect to do well on this one. So you can see the focus on his face. He's ready to go for sure. He knows he needs a big performance here. This is an event, when he looked at the six events, he'd be thinking, this is an event I can win. Yeah, he's, he's really, really got to step up here and, and uh, set a mark uh, with this event. And, and for him, personally, starting day two with a strong event is going to be very important to his overall performance because he could do well here. I think, you know, from watching some of his training, it looks like his uh, uh, yoke into log medley has gone well, and he's definitely a guy that's a threat on the stones as well. So he could make a big move here. Day two on paper, much, much better day for Maxine. Let's see how he does on the roller coaster. He's starting fast. He's almost halfway up for that ramp already. Good, powerful pulls. And you can see with Max, the, the tension on the rope is staying much better. I don't know if that rope has actually touched the ground in the middle, which is huge. Seems to be doing shorter pulls than Kevin, but keeping that tension, moving through the rope nicely, using that leg power. He's just, he's got to finish strong now here. He's almost there. And this is where the fatigue is really, really going to set in. This is looking good. Way ahead of Kevin Ferris at this point. Already passed him by two feet. Now the question is, can he get to the top and dump those bags out? He can do this. Breathing. Needs to remove the belt. Let's see his partner in the back. Canada's strongest woman cheering him on. Four more feet to go. And Boudreaux's got go. it. Our first finisher. And that will be time. 109.89 seconds for Maxime Boudreaux. Now, they, this tells me this is a brutal event. I know you'd like to be down there trying it. I am quite happy up here watching. <laughs> <laughs> See, Max 
I think there what you saw is the breathing, the breathing factor. And uh, because of the, the longer time limit, right? So when, once you start passing a, about 45 seconds, that's where your breathing is really gonna come into play here. And I think what you saw with him uh, in the belt situation, maybe he could have gone with a different setup there yeah. with the belts and, and maybe just gone with the soft belt instead of um, the, the more of a power belt on top because he didn't really need that. And again, his arms and back are strong enough to pull that without that setup. Do you find with arm over arm, every setup is different? Like, I, I've, I've had experience with arm over arm before. Some are really, really heavy, some are light, and you can tend to just pull more of the arms. It's never an event that you can guarantee what's going to happen. You know, some events like a deadlift, we know the results and what they're going to be like. This type of event, much, much harder to predict, much more room for error and different types of results. Yeah, what I will say watching, watching the first two competitors go is I have to say i think they did a great job on the weight i think it's it's a, a true test of strength we've seen that now like you said yeah <laughs> max doing what he just did there that shows how difficult this is and i think that you're gonna get a great separation through all of the competitors but you're right every yeah, setup is different and learning this apparatus for example you know somebody that may be able to get a, get away with having a little bit more slack in the rope with a different arm over arm. This one, you may not be able to get away with it the same. Do you think the other athletes will be watching Max perform there? One minute nine, thinking, damn, this is tough. If it's taking Max over a minute to finish this event, what's going through their head right now? The guys that were concerned at all about this are going to be more concerned. And the guys that are, are potentially in the mix saying, hey, this is an open door now, because a minute nine, I, I could maybe do this in sub 60 seconds. And now they know the benchmark because Max is such a good puller. And to be fair, Kevin as well, that's a great pull. You know, it's, it's, it, that may be, and we'll see, the, the event will have to play out for sure, but that may be a great result as well. Absolutely. Let's take one more look at Maxime Boudreaux's effort as he is able to complete the entirety of this event inside the time cap, about 109 to move that 600 pounds the full 54 feet. Definitely had more tension on the rope than Kevin did. Making use of the leg power with every pull. And I think one factor there with Maxim, he didn't have to go to the point of wrapping the rope around his arm. His grip strength held, held out through the whole event. Strategy-wise as well, and I don't know, again, if this would come into play or not, but possibly having a little bit of chalk with you on the platform, because now the, the other guys have seen, hey, this is gonna take a little bit longer, and if my grip starts to go, strategically, maybe you pull it three quarters of the way, and then take, you know, 10 seconds to re-chalk, and then jump back on it. That could, that could be a factor here, but again, Strategically, if you can go later in the, in the uh, lineup, you're always going to get a little bit of a learning, especially if you can sit back and watch, right? You watch the first couple guys and you learn, and that's the way that you should do this as a, a top-level competitor. And that is a key point there, is being able to adapt and watch what happens through an event, and especially a new event that we haven't seen before. Brilliant point there by Brian. Athor Melstead coming up next. Currently in eighth place overall, ten and a half points. His best finish of the competition was a fifth in event number two. Ten seconds. Those last countdown seconds before the event start is very different for strongmen here at the Rogue Invitational. The guys are not used to that. They're used to just setting up and saying go. Uh, so that little little waiting period, you're kind of playing the mental game a little bit about what is in front of you. And like I said, that viewpoint of staring, <laughs> we can see it there now. At that going up is uh, it's something else, man. I mean, that's that's got to be neat. Like I said, we, we talked about it already. I I would love to be sitting down there watching it. You know, seeing that progress uh, happening is is huge. It's about a 20 degree incline. This not looking like his favorite event this weekend. But he's yeah. digging deep. He needs to keep fighting for every foot. I think watching what we've seen so far, there's going to be athletes that don't finish. So he needs to keep digging deep, keep pulling, keep trying to get that car as high up on that ramp as he can. 40 seconds left. He's still got time to do this. 
And maybe the fact that he's not rushing, he can save a little bit of energy towards the end, keep the, keep the cart moving. Kevin went off fast, but he burnt out. Aether is still managing to get pulls in this. He's got 25 seconds left. Yeah, if he can keep this moving, like you said, he might be under good points here. I think he's just with that pull gone ahead of Kevin. Come on, Melster, keep it moving. Nine feet to go. Ten seconds, two more pulls potentially. If he can get a big pull, he may do this. One more, he's going to have to be quick. Oh! And Melster's going to get it. There we go. He gets it. Wow. The score is when the first bag hits the mat, so Melstead does get in inside that time cap. We just have to wait for the official score, but Maxime Boudreau will still be your overall leader. But that is a great effort for Athor Melstead, who's able to get those bags to drop just inside that 90-second mark. I think Athor is going to be very pleased with that performance. Beforehand, you know he wasn't looking forward to this event. Solid run there, finished it. That's a big thing for any athlete, especially on these new, impressive-looking events. You just want to finish. I think, like you said, he had a good strategy going in. He started wrapping fairly early, and I think that was a strategy move to save his grip a little bit. Yeah. He worked through the clock, and again, he completed the course. And, and uh, you know, to beat Kevin in this, and, and it would only be fair to ask Kevin, hey, would you go differently had you gone later and seen a couple guys go because you know the first first competitor out on a new event i mean that's tough it's and totally you could hard. be super talented but you don't know how to attack it so you know if kevin would have went slower for example and it, it needed to be faster he could very well flip flop and say the exact opposite thing hey i should have gone quicker you know so it's it's a um uh, an advantage to go later, much later in the uh, competitor order, so for sure. You're sat with us here. If you were out there competing now, would you be looking at big, powerful pulls, just focusing on getting it done, or would you try and be going to really fast movements? So what, what I would say for me is I would compare this very much to the bolt pull in Malta in 2009, right? And what I did for me is I knew the technique I was going to do. I knew my strategy. And I stayed in my own head, my own zone, and I didn't care how hard some of the other guys made, made it look or how badly they were hurting or whatever. I just said, you know what? I know my ability and I'm confident in what I can do. And I just went out and attacked it. So for me, I would do that exact same thing. I would look at it, I would watch these guys for sure, but I would have already played with this apparatus um, in the testing and I would have I came up with what I thought was going to work. And maybe I would have tested it more than some of the other guys would have, potentially, if I needed to. But I would attack it that way and, and have my game plan. And, and unless I saw something monumental that was very different, I would see how the clicking happened and, and kind of have that dialed in. That's how I would personally attack it. But, you know, again, maybe it's not fair uh, to ask me because I love arm over arm events. Uh, it's one of your <laughs> you favorite know. events. That's, yeah, an event you've done extremely well at in the past. I think. Melstead there, we just saw how happy he was. Very pleased with that performance. We've got Bobby Thompson up next. Still waiting on Melstead's official score, but he needed every second of that minute and a half to get that thing done as Bobby Thompson comes in in seventh place overall. Started off pretty well, top five finish, fifth place. And event number one, back to seventh place finishes in events two and three. Bobby's more of one of these athletes that likes the power of it. The heavier, the better. The fact that this is heavy could suit him. If he's kind of just going to take his time, focus on powerful pulls, much better than I think if it was just a fast arm speed pull. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's fun to look at the guy's face a little bit as they sit down. And you saw Max's face with a, a tenace, tenacious look of confidence. Bobby looks a little concerned here. He's a bit timid looking yeah, on this one, isn't he? Yeah. It's not like a, a log lift for, you know, we see him approach the, the static events. Bobby's comfortable. And you can see already he's wrapping the rope around his arm for I, his first pull. I thought after watching Melstead, this would be a tactic that used. Bobby not known for one of the best grips, but he does have the leg power. He has the back power. So if he can just lock that grip in yep. and get as far as he can with each pull, perhaps if he doesn't rush, he can finish this off. Still waiting on Melsa's official score, but we do know that Maxime Boudreau still has the mark to beat at 109.60 seconds, and Bobby Thompson gets to work here. Bobby knows he's one of these athletes, the fast twitch muscle fibers, he's all about power. 
he'll burn out quickly. So he's trying to get as much distance on this as he can early on. And then he will just dig deep and keep fighting. He is a fighter. He's someone that never gives up. The amount of times we've seen this guy batting and push himself. He really is a warrior. And he's going up quick. He's doing good. He, he's just got to stay in that attack mode right now as, as this starts to get painful. He really, really has to dig in here toward the top because this is going to be where he separates himself to get possibly a couple extra points. He's not looking as efficient in terms of technique, but the power is pulling him through right now. Goes ahead of Kevin. His next marker is Melstead, who I believe we didn't get a finishing time for. He's not official on the screen right now, but... Wow. Thompson's going to get through. Big, powerful pull. And Bobby but. Thompson is our new leader, 102.28 seconds. Now that tells me this event is suiting the big, powerful guys. The guys that can put that big distance down with each pull. And I think looking at guys that have got to come, that suits someone like Pablo Nicolucci. Yeah, His back power that we saw yesterday on the deadlift, if he can hold on to that, use that back and leg power, he may be able to put in a decent time. Bobby's going to be thrilled with that. That's a think, huge performance for Bobby. Yeah, massive, massive performance. And I think he needed it at this point in the competition for him. You know, I think he was probably frustrated with a couple different things. And, you know, I mean, to step up like that starting day two is a big, big move for Bobby. And, you know, it's, again, the advantage of going a little bit later in the clock. Uh, Maxime put up the time to beat, and now it just got beat. Not the performance I expected, as you two mentioned. The look on his face was not one that exuded confidence going into this event, but he is now our leader. This was, was fantastic. Pure power. Brian, talk us through his technique here. Well, he's, he's struggling a little bit with the rope position. And, you know, he started with the wrap and, and then, you know, kind of was, was swimming to get the rope and then sometimes wrapped and sometimes didn't. But I think what you saw a little bit was as the cart started moving, he started to gain some confidence. And that last pull there, he get, gathered huge momentum on that pull, pulled it straight across. That was a perfect finish there for Bobby. And look what it means to him. Oh, man, that's such a good feeling when you walk out to an event and you, you, you are concerned about it, and then it goes really well because I think both of us talking before were thinking Bobby might not do great with that. And, and he really stepped up and, and proved it. And I think as the cart started moving, like I said, his confidence grew and he was like, wow, this thing is moving. I can attack it yeah. and, and keep going. And I think, you know, once you kind of get to that three quarter, you know, area of finishing and you're still feeling powerful and the rope is still going, that's when you have to dig and you've got to hit the gas and say, hey, I'm tired, but if I can just get it there a little bit faster, that's where we're gonna see the separation. And, and uh, it'll be interesting to see now how the other competitors go to attack this. Rob Kearney is going to be up next. Kearney currently sixth place overall. Finished fourth in event number two. That's his best finish of the competition. And getting back to Bobby Thompson, that's huge for him because he's only five points out of a spot inside the top five. Yeah, I mean, Bobby, I would have expected more in the dumbbell from Bobby yesterday, but he's made up for it there with that performance. He'll be really pleased with his arm over arm here on the Roga Coaster. Now, our next athlete, Rob Kearney, had a solid performance yesterday. Rob has the power in the legs, he has the power in the back. His grip is suspect. I'm expecting him to wrap this rope straight away. I think he'll, he'll be watching what Bobby did there and saying, hey, if you can start with the wrap and get it moving, and then from there, he's just, he's just got to attack. I mean, there's, there's not much uh, for Rob that he can leave off the table, right? Like, there, this is not a, I don't think this is a strategy event. I don't think it's anything where he can't give everything. He's just got to lay it out there and, and see where, where it falls. Yeah, he's got to attack this. We know he's powerful, and I think the fact that it's heavy could suit him. He's not built for this type of event in terms of, he doesn't have the long levers, he doesn't have the, the best grip. But watching Bobby will have given him a lot of confidence. I would say that exact same thing, Lawrence. I mean, he's, if Bobby would have struggled, Rob would probably play it a little bit different, but he's like, hey, you know what? Kind of a similar type of build, and he's gonna go behind his back here with the rope. This is interesting.
talked to Rob earlier this week, and he acknowledged the fact, like you said, Lars, grip usually isn't his thing, but he did like the fact that this rope is a little bit smaller. That's definitely an advantage for him. Often we see quite a thick rope on these arm over arms. The fact that this is a thinner rope will suit him. It's not that it necessarily makes it easier, but it's less t you, you, Your forearms don't burn up quite as quickly on a thinner rope. Kearney getting right to work here. I'm not sure about having it behind him like that. There's a chance of that burning through his midsection. It also just seems to be getting in his way more than anything. Yeah. Well, one, one thing I would say, and I don't know what was stated in the rules as far as taking the slack out of a rope, but every event that I've ever done, the person taking the slack is not supposed to put any tension on the rope at all. So the fact that there's tension there, if there was no tension on his back, this would be a much bigger problem. So I would think that the competitor typically has to clear the slack himself and that the person taking the slack is only taking that. So it's an interesting thing, but again, I wasn't part of the rules meeting, so I'm not quite sure. And, um, again, it seems like it's just getting in his way anyway. To me, it just seems to be getting in his way, lifting his top up there, causing him more issues than, than good, really. I think it's right for him to be wrapping around. We know the grip strength isn't there to just hold it. He's got the leg power, but the rope is in the way. He's not enjoying this at all. Yeah, it just doesn't look comfortable for him, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's just got to dig deep because, again, he, there's still some other competitors here to come, and he doesn't know how it's going to play out. So the, every every foot that he can get out of that, that cart is what he's got to do at this point. Mentally, at this point, it's so draining. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those, he knows there's some very good athletes to come, but you've got to keep fighting. He knows there's two events to go, though, and uh, with the next event coming up could be a good event for him. So maybe it's best to just leave it there and save his energy for the next one. Rob Kearney will get about 25 feet unofficially on his effort. I didn't do that much work. We have five men remaining. How would you be approaching this, Lawrence, if you were if you were next up? So arm over arm is one of those events for me. I preferred it when it was heavier. Okay. The heavier pulls tended to suit me. I could engage more of that leg and back power. And I wasn't so bad in terms of grip strength, but I was a bit clumsy when it was really quick. So I would be trying to do a bit like Bobby Thompson did there, just wrap it around, big powerful pulls, try and get cover as much distance as I could in as short a time as possible, and hope that I could finish it within around the, the one minute, one minute 10 mark. If I had to keep going beyond that, I would have burnt out. I just wasn't, I, I didn't like the longer distances, longer times. You think you would try to wrap the, the rope? I, I would have probably wrapped watching Bobby then. Um, like we said earlier, it's a different type of grip strength. My grip strength was very good in terms of holding on to farmers' walks, bars, whereas on a, on, a, on a rope, if that starts to slip and pull through your hands, it kind of burns your hands out, can fatigue your hands for events to come, and also pumps up your forearms quite a bit. So, yeah, I would have just tried to lock on, uh, wrapping the rope around my arm, and then just use that back and leg power. Let's take, take one more look at Rob Kearney, who like you said, just never looked comfortable here. Yeah, you could tell right from the start this is an event. You could see he had that nervous look on his face, the same as Bobby Thompson did, but it worked out for Bobby, whereas for Rob, it just seemed to get worse and worse. And you could see that confidence drain from him very, very quickly. I think Rob just wanted to be away from that. He's got a great event to come. He'll want to come back and prove what he's capable of in that one. But this one, it is horrible. When you know it's going badly, you just want to get out of there. What's interesting is he wrapped the rope around his back, but never really wrapped it around his wrist going through there. So I think that it was probably, I would I would guess, a friction thing that he was going for, so that, it, you know, going around his body and kind of through his other arm, he could maybe pinch it with right, his elbow. I'm sure, I'm sure he had a tactic in his head. I, I, just don't, I just don't think it really worked out for him. Yeah. Mitchell Hooper is up next. has a little bit of momentum. He won the Husseville bag carry last night to move himself up to fifth place overall. He's only two points out of a spot inside the top three. And Mitch needs a big performance on this one. He was a little bit disappointed in terms of the deadlift and the Sia dumbbell yesterday. Brought it back on the sandbag carry. He needs a big performance on this one. And he's an athlete that's capable, fit. He's got good leverage, strong legs, strong back. Let's, he's smart as well. He's someone that will have watched these first athletes go and have, and have picked up some tips. I mean, it's his rookie year in Strongman. You competed with him this, uh, this year. 
He's an incredible athlete. You don't see many people like this, do you? No, Mitch is, is a guy that you can tell that he's studying and thinking, like you said, and he will be thinking. But at the end of the day, he's a good athlete. And a lot of times when you're a good athlete, you can step up and do things and just kind of watch and naturally pick it up a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how he attacks this. But again, he's in striking distance, like you said. And this, this event could put him into the top three. A big performance here sets the stage for the rest of the day. And that is his goal this weekend. He wants to get on the top three at the yes. Rosen Team. It would be an incredible finish to his rookie year. Oh, outstanding. I mean, you can't, you can't discount that. And again, with as well as Mitch has done this year, it's easy to forget that, that really this is his first year of top-level strong. Yeah. Early pulls are looking good. Nice, long, powerful pulls. His grip is holding out so far. He's not having to wrap. It's looking great. And he starts to wrap. I think just focusing on powerful pulls, not rushing, making sure every single pull you're covering decent distance. More than halfway there. You're making really good progress. A minute got, to go. He's got to dig in right now. Got to dig in. This is this is the time right now where it's going to separate him or not separate him. Time's going good. He's nearly there. Oh, wow. One more One pull. One pull should do it. That's and a fantastic Mitch time. Mitch Hooper demolishes Bobby Thompson's top time. Looking for wow. his second straight event win here. 46.99 seconds. And he has demolished the time so far. Very, very big performance there from Mitch Hooper. Good start to day two. He knows there's some great athletes, so there's no big kind of cheer at the moment. He knows some fantastic athletes still to come. But I think that could be some decent points for Mitch Hooper. That's a big way to step up right there. And I think you saw kind of through that midpoint, he started just to wrap a little bit and, and you know, maybe miss grip a, 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 just a touch there. But he dug in when he needed to dig in and he finished it and, and put up the top time. And I mean, right now that puts a lot of pressure on these next competitors. Yeah, they're going to be feeling it, definitely. And for me, the, 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 the under the most pressure is Martins Lissis, defending champion, six points away from that first place. This event is going to be very, very important for him. Yeah, this event is massive. I mean, for, for all of these guys, but especially yeah. for Martins, he's, gotta, he's got to make a move to get up there a little bit. And, and it'll be interesting for Trey, too, and Alexi, because those two guys at the top of the leaderboard, will this event play out where it costs them points, or are they going to be able to stay in the mix? You, you'll Go back and take one more look at Mitch Hooper here. He started off so fast. They didn't need to wrap around at all. Good, powerful pulls. It wasn't until halfway up he started to wrap, but he still maintained that power with every single pull. And he has a great engine on him. Coming from marathon running of all sports, who, who comes from marathon into strongman? You know, the the uh, engine is good, as we as we saw on the on the uh, Husafel sandbag carry. Very talented golfer as well. And really employed a strategy that you were talking about earlier, Brian. You've got those early pulls, got some good momentum, then took a second, gathered himself, and that's where he started to wrap. That really was a fantastic time there by Hooper. 46.99 seconds for Mitch Hooper, and after his win last night, he was talking to Kiki Dixon, and he said he didn't feel like the first two events really were indicative of the kind of athlete that he is, and now he is showing that off. That was important for him, and, and mentally, starting day two like that for Mitch, that's gonna be solid points. I mean, after the number of competitors that have already gone, it's gonna be good points. It's just now determining how good that's going to be. And it, like I said, it puts a lot of pressure on these next competitors. And, you know, when you walk up to an event like this, if you got the pressure, do you miss grip a little bit? Do you, do you try to rush too much? And, you know, if you haven't practiced this and dialed in where your, your hands are going to go, how you're going to grip, and, you know, where, where the event is going to play out, if you haven't dialed that in and you haven't practiced it, doing it under pressure is much different than in training. So you've got to create that training environment where you're under a stopwatch and you've, you've got to do it um, so that you're used to gripping like that. So you can't casually train arm over arm and expect to come out here and then have the pressure 
and perform like that, you know? So I know for me, I practice very much that way. I'd put a stopwatch on it. I would have to beat a time. I would try to set expectations. And I felt like that helped me a lot in my training coming into any type of an event like this. Here's Pablo Nakanechi who comes in in fourth place overall. He won the opening event, the Tower of Power. He's got 20 points and he only trails Martins Lietzis by a half point for third place overall. I don't know why, but I, I think this could be a great event for him. I really do. I've never seen him do an arm over arm before, but when you look at the way he's built and you see the events that he's strong at, he's got that powerful back. I think he's got the long levers. Watching the guys that have gone before him, he'll, he'll, hopefully he'll have understood what he needs to do. I think if he can have the engine on him and finish this in a decent time, he's going to be powerful. For sure, every single pull, I'm expecting a big distance. It's whether he can keep that going through the time limit. Mitch Hooper's score has been updated now to 42.53 seconds. Oh, wow. 20 seconds faster than Bobby Thompson. It'll be interesting here with Pavlo to see how much tension he can keep on the rope. Like you said, Lawrence, I think his pulls will be powerful. There's no doubt about that. But will he lose so much tension on the rope that that's what's costing him time? Yeah. He's wrapping straight from the start, so let's see how much distance he can pull in every rep that he uses. Plunging the rope, but he saw the power. Look at the distance he gets on that. Cart flying up that ramp. Is all, already 20 feet in. Something you said earlier there, Brian, about the preparation you would have put into this event. He looks like he's got the power. Maybe he hasn't put that specific training into the armor of ramp. But look how quickly it's still flying up there. He has tremendous power, 25 years old. He's got a chance here to beat and Cooper. Every pull, he's getting great distance. And he's done it. And he will get it. Wow. Pablo Nakanechny in about 39 seconds. I just feel with this guy, give him a year or two with some, you know, imagine him training with you, that your methodology and your kind of focus on events. The raw power that this man has is incredible. I was just going to say, I mean, it's, it's incredible to see the power, but if I could have just talked to him for 10 minutes yesterday, a little bit and, and, and gone through this practice a touch, I think I think he would knock some time off that without a doubt. And that's the scary thing for everyone else. Yeah, he, <laughs> 38 he, seconds and he looked like he was clumsy with the, you know, getting himself back in position, making his hands in position, but he still with that sheer power put a performance in of 38.51 seconds. And he is now really putting the pressure on the final three men to go, the top three men in the overall standings because as I mentioned before, he was only a half point out of third and just six and a half points back of his fellow countryman Alexei Novikov for the overall lead. And now the three men in front of him really need to come up with some solid performances if they want to stay in front of that man. The pressure is on. That, that is for sure. And, and uh, Pablo is going to be very happy with that. I mean, that's, that's stepping up to the plate. First Rogue Invitational. This contest at this level, to do that, what he did on the deadlift, what he did here, huge, huge. I mean, it uh, can't be, can't be um, understated what he has done, and that, that's massive. I mean, it's, it's going to end up moving him up the leaderboard, I believe, and it's, it's a great move starting day two. Let's go back and look at his effort, and while it's not maybe the prettiest thing, but certainly effective. He's just pure power. I mean, look how much... He's clumsy there with the rope, even that very first pull, but every time he clamps down, the power engage from those legs, from those backs, he gets so much distance on that car. I don't think he needed to wrap. I think he may have seen some of the other guys wrap. I think he should have started out and just gone for it. You know, I mean, I think trying to wrap is what cost him so much time, potentially. And it's crazy to say that with the time that he put up. Yeah. But if you look at the cart movement in between the times where it's not moving, all he's trying to do is get a grip back on the rope. He could potentially be down at the 30 second mark with some practice on that. I, I firmly believe that. I, th I think that's totally possible and he proved it. But you, you just watch the cart move and, you know, I, I would have I said to him, hey, why do you even need to wrap it around the I mean, if you've got that much power, unless the grip was slipping, but it, it didn't look like the grip was slipping at all for him. So. Great performance, nonetheless. I mean, it's we're sitting here analyzing and saying, hey, he did great, but he could have <laughs> done better. Won. It's crazy. Yeah. 
Martins Leitzies will be up next. Two third place finishes and then a sixth last night in the Husafel bag carry. He is your defending Rogue Invitational champion, but he certainly has some work to do here, especially after what we just saw Pablo Nakanechny put up with 38.51 seconds. So for me, this is all about showing that he's a true champion now. He's in a difficult spot. He needs a big performance. And that time from, from Pavlo and from Mitch are very impressive. He needs to try and beat those and hope that someone like Novikov comes behind them. Well, I think what you're going to see from Martins here is a more practice technique. He will have trained this in his gym, getting ready. And I think his strategy with the rope, I don't think you'll see him being clumsy with the rope. I think he's going to have a strategy he wants to execute to get that cart moving and to keep it moving and to keep the tension on the rope. So if he can get that done, I think Martins has the grip to get this done. But again, like you said, this is the moment. Go, this is the move you have to make. And, you know, it all tends to come down to the last event where you talk about that. But if he wants to be in that battle in the last event, he has to make a move right now. Yeah, he really needs a top three finish on this one. Anything less than that is just not going to be good enough. And he's got he's got to put some pressure on both Trey Mitchell and Alexei Novikov as well because they are coming out next. So if Martins does not step up and put that pressure, now it gives them an open door to potentially extend their lead on him as well. Absolutely. Leitzies is just about set here. He is one of those athletes that seems to be able to pull it out the bag when, it, when he needs it. Let's see what he's got. First event of day two at the Rogue Invitation. He looks focused. He's, he's definitely ready to go. Fantastic grip strength, great leg strength, back strength. He's again another athlete that's got all the attributes and he's attacking this fast. Shorter pulls than we've seen from Pablo, but quick, much better hand transition. Doing well. He's going to keep his pace up. 20 feet, 25 feet now. 20 up. seconds gone by. He's moving it well. He's going well. If he can keep this up, he's going to do this. Different technique, but it's working. Creeping closer, Martins Leitzis has a chance here to set the top He's score. He's going to do it. And, and he will go. get it. Pressure is on, and the Dragon delivers. Martins Leitzis, 33.83 seconds, your new top score. And that is why he is our champion. Rogue Invitational winner from last year. He wants to defend that title. That was big. That was an important performance. And, you know, when we talked about Nekunich earlier, it was that lack of transition. Martins was perfect there. He kept the tension on the rope all the time. Fast, getting himself back up. Unbelievable performance there. Yeah, he, he had to step up and do that. And, you know, I, I, I think before the event, thinking about it, Martins has all the tools to execute like that, and he did it, and right? And now, the pressure is off of him. Of he, ju he just put the marker up. Now now it's it's Alexei Novikov and Trey Mitchell. Yeah. They're going to be feeling it. And for people who maybe have not watched a lot of Strongman, you think all about just strength and power, but you forget, and we were talking about this last night, the technique that's involved. And there's an example of why technique is important, because Nakanechi, as you said, may have had this, this strength to beat that score, but he just didn't have the technique. Leeds is much cleaner here in this effort. Just being the strongest isn't enough in Strongman. We're sat next to one of the, the, the best technicians there is, someone who really thought about every single element of the sport. You're the best man, Brian, to tell people about that. You have to be well prepared on these type of events. Yeah, you definitely do. I mean, the only thing that I would say sitting here is, that I would be asking about as a competitor, for sure, is the, the man taking the slack, taking the rope, why is there so much tension on the rope, right? Like this event, in my opinion, the, the competitors should be asked to clear the rope themselves. And with that, when Martins is regripping, there's so much tension coming out the back. Why, why is that happening? But again, it's happened for everybody. We mentioned it with Rob Kearney. So at least they're being consistent with the... the so it's, it's interesting to see, you know, as the... Um, you know, event is going on here. The technique, like you said, Lawrence, if you're well practiced, right, and you're going into this, you just have to step up and execute, right? Well, so we've got two fantastic athletes to come. Trey Mitchell really performing well this year. We need to see what work he's put into this event because, you know, historically, this isn't going to be his favorite event. 
what kind of training has he been putting in to address this type of thing? Because if he can have a big performance here, if Trey can get top three on this, he's putting himself in a position to win this title. Nothing outside the top four so far for Trey Mitchell. Back-to-back second-place finishes to start off the competition and then a fourth place last night. Yeah, very solid start for Trey Mitchell. And this is, this is a moment, like you said, Lawrence, he can open the door, right? Because I think the question mark for somebody like a Bobby Thompson, who did relatively well in this event, now Trey is going to look at Bobby. Bobby is standing there with Trey. I'm sure that he's given him some advice and, and uh, technique. And, you know, that's the camaraderie of the sport that's so nice, right? Like, you, you can see Bobby Thompson there say, come on, Trey, let's get this done. So Trey has the pressure on him, but he also had the pressure on him in the dumbbell event. Yep. He stepped up. He had the pressure on him in the deadlift event. He stepped up. So he has come ready to play, and that, that cannot be discounted with Trey Mitchell. So let's see what he can do here. Well, we know he's in good shape. Amazing performance not so long ago at the Shaw Classic. Day one has gone fantastically for Trey Mitchell. Let's see how he starts day two, the roger coaster. Well, we know that he has the power. I mean, his back and legs, this will be no problem to move this. It is simply a grip factor for Trey. Can his grip hold out? Can he maintain a grip on that rope and be able to transfer his power into this event and if he can do that he can put up a great time he doesn't need to win the event but he needs to get in the mix he's i think right now for him probably if he could beat bobby thompson on, on the leaderboard i think that that would be a, a great result for him introduced to the crowd Looks a little bit nervous, as you'd expect in this position. He kind of always has that look on his <laughs> He face. does, to be fair. He, 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 you know, he, <laughs> could, he could be walking up to something he loves and, and kind of be looking like that. But, you know, hopefully, hopefully he can turn that into focus here and make this event happen. He's, he's an interesting character, very mild-mannered, very polite. You know, he's not a big character in terms of being on social media and stuff like that. But when it comes to competition, he is seriously one of the best in the world right now. Yeah, he, he has put the work in, and he is, like we, we were talking yesterday, he's improved tremendously, tremendously, and somehow still manages to fly under the radar a little bit when you're talking about the top competitors, but he's always at the top of the leaderboard or thereabouts. Here goes Trey Mitchell. Good power in those first couple pulls. It doesn't have the speed of Martins, but the power is there. Every single pull again, nice distance. He's really got to dig in and keep this thing moving. It's a good start. It's a much better start than I thought we were going to see from Trey, so this is good. This is really good. If he can keep this going, he's on for a decent time. Those Martins leads us by four and a half points for second place. Martins is safe, but this is where he's well, got to he's, he's going to finish this. And Trey and Mitchell. Goes. And that looks unofficial like it's ahead of Mitch Hooper. Third place so far for Trey Mitchell. He will be delighted with this wow. performance. 40.89, now that is big for Trey Mitchell to keep himself inside the top three after four events. Only two events remain after this, so a great effort from him. As again, he came in in second place overall with 25 points, trying to hold off Martins Litsis, who right now has the time to beat and only trails him by four and a half points. But Mitchell may have made it so that Lisi's will not be able to erase that deficit in this event. Lisi's would have definitely wanted more people between him and Trey Mitchell on this one. That is a big performance. And look at the power he gets. He's not comfortable in this event. You know, he's a bigger athlete. It's not so easy to be stretching forward and getting in position. But he put, he's clearly put the work in. Big, powerful legs. Big, powerful back. And his grip held out then as well. That's a huge, huge statement from Trey Mitchell. Huge statement. I don't think that either one of us was expecting No, that. I really wasn't. I, I'm so happy for him, man. He's, he's going to be thrilled. He's just such a great guy. And like you say, he often gets like, overlooked. People aren't always talking about him, but he is. Every comp we look at this year, he's always there or thereabouts. All eyes on Alexei Novikov. He will be the last man to go. He is your overall leader, and he only trailed Mitchell, or he led Mitchell, pardon me, by a point and a half. So Novikov's got to stay close to that time 
to stay in the lead here. I think you would agree, Lawrence, this is probably one of the events for Lexi that could, could be a little chink in the armor, potentially, right? So the, we were thinking the same thing about Trey Mitchell. So Alexi has to prove it right now. And now you, you start to see that leaderboard and you're, you're saying, wow, yeah, there's pressure. There's a lot of pressure. There is. I mean, there's been some great times put up. He could potentially do really well on this one. He could potentially drop back a fair few points as well. And then the competition is really on for the last two events. But let's see what Alexi can do. He is one of those athletes that sometimes surprises. I remember watching him do a truck pull this year, earlier this year, and no one was expecting him to win. And he went and blasted everyone. You just never know with this man. He tends to step up in the moments where he needs to step up. And, and the best competitors will do that. Absolutely. So Alexi has proved that time and time again. He's a relatively young, still a young guy. I think he's the second youngest in the field. Which is incredible for, for his career thus far. He's done phenomenal. So, you know, these big moments, this, as a competitor, this is what you live for. This is what you want. You want the day to start. And now the event started, the adrenaline has built and built up to this moment. And this is what everybody wants to see. And this is what all the training comes down to right now. Did you put the work in? Can you prove it? It's time to step up and make it happen. 42 seconds is the number he's got to be thinking about right now in order to hang on to the top spot on the overall leaderboard. If he does not beat that time, he will I'm, surrender two I'm, points to Mitchell. I'm wondering if he'll take more of a, a Lisi's approach. He's you know, a shorter, smaller athlete. I think he's got the fitness to keep that engine going, be quick and transition quickly with the rope. I'm sure he's practiced this event. He is a smart guy. He's not someone that just turns up and thinks, I'll have a go. He puts the prep in. He thinks about events. He'll have watched every single athlete go. It's interesting to see as well where his shirt is chalked up at. And I don't know if that's a strategy, potentially, if he needs it uh, to wrap the rope somehow. But... It's a lot of chalk to have on the shoulder. <laughs> I'm thinking it's either that or it's chalked still from yesterday. <laughs> that, that could be. That could be as well. <laughs> Maybe he didn't realize there's more than one T-shirt in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting himself fired up now. This is a big performance time. This is where he needs to put the, the foot down and make it even harder for the chasing pack. Alexei Novikov has finished inside the top three in every single event. He won the Sear Bell ladder as expected and then finished second last night in the Husafel sandbag carry. On paper, when we looked at the events, you, you clearly think day one is better for him. He's, he's a front runner. He gets himself in the lead. Yes. Now he needs to keep that pressure on the rest of the athletes. They'll be feeling it because there's been some big performances. Here goes Alexei Novikov. The lighter athlete doesn't have that sheer bulk that some of the other guys have to kind of really pull hard against that car. But he's up about halfway already. He's going well. Yeah, this is a great start for Alexi. He's digging deep here. He's not worrying about wrapping the rope. He's keeping quick. Powerful pulls. More than halfway there. He's not going to beat Lissis his time looking at this now. Now where can he place? He needs to finish soon. One more pull and he could get second. And Alexei Novikov is there and a great oh, performance for Alexei Novikov. 39.04 unofficial, just edging out Trey Mitchell. Ooh. So instead of surrendering points, Novikov will build on his lead over second place Trey Mitchell. But Martins Litsis is going to be creeping closer now after this event win. 10 points for the Dragon. And that's a big win there for Martins. Last year, he only won the last event. He's already bagged an event in the start of day number two. He knows he's got the stones to come later, which he will believe he's going to win that one. He's an exceptional stone lifter. He's done everything he needs to do to get himself right back in this competition. Unofficially, it looks like Litsis is going to shave two points off of Alexei Novikov's lead. Litsis with 33.83 seconds to win the event. Pablo Nakanechny, another top three finish for him. He'll take second. And then Alexei Novikov, our overall leader, looking to stay on top of the leaderboard. He will finish in third place. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon, who is with our event winner, Martins Litsis.
Martins, congratulations on your event win. Now, this is the first time we've seen the Roga Coaster. Where did this one hurt the most? Um, well, I don't think I felt anything during it. I just kind of saw red and went. You went, it worked for you. Now, you're one of the strongmen that were able to go later in the game. What were you able to learn from the other strongmen that went before you? Um, quick reset. I could tell that it's not too heavy. It's really strange hearing my voice. Anyways, I could tell that it was not too heavy, so it was just about quickly re-grabbing the rope and just making sure there wasn't too much time between each pull. Now you are the reigning and defending Rogue Invitational Champion. Two more events to go. What can we expect? I'm going to have to win them to win it. We'll see you back out here. Thank you very much. Thanks, our teens. First event win of the 2022 Rogue Invitational for Martins Leetzies and had the most unique technique of any of the strongmen here and it pays off for him. Yeah, he mentioned there in his interview, he was trying to make sure he kept that tension on the rope, quick pulls, and it paid off for him. You know, we said Pablo had tremendous power, but just wasn't quite as efficient. Martins very well practiced on this, and it paid off there. A big, big event win for the defending champion. Martins Leitzis gets his first event win of this Rogue Invitational, his second career Rogue Invitational win. Last year, he waited to the end of the competition to win an event, and it's Alexei Novikov who now leads Martins Leitzis by four points. Trey Mitchell stays in second place. He is now two and a half points back of Novikov. Pablo Nakanechny remains in fourth place, and Mitch Hooper stays in fifth. Rob Kearney will drop from sixth to seventh. And Bobby Thompson has moved up one spot into sixth place all by himself. Still want to give this one a try, Brian? I would love to give this <laughs> a try. I think that's a, a great result. You saw Martin step up as the defending champion, do what he had to do. He gained a couple big points back here in this event. And I'll tell you what, it's getting interesting. The leaderboard could change, but it's a lot of pressure now in these final two events for these guys. That yeah, lost two events left. What are you expecting to see here on the remainder of the competition? We're going to have such an exciting finish. It's getting very, very close at the top there. You know, Martins creeping up. Uh, Novikov getting the point on Trey, but Lissis was catching him as well. So they're just getting closer and closer that between those three. I think we're going to have an amazing finish. Mitch and Pavlo still fighting. It's going to be an amazing last two events here at the Rogue Invitational. Two events remain in the Strongman competition. Brian, thanks so much for stopping by. It's always great having you here. I, I know the audience learns a ton, as do I. We really love what you add to the broadcast. Have fun being a fan and uh, enjoy your time here. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun, and, and uh, you guys are doing excellent work. Thanks a lot, man. We are done for now for the Strongman competition. We will continue with the CrossFit competition in a little bit. Event number five, the turtle coming up for the women. The dragon with his first event win here at the Rogue Invitational. Thank you.